Well, what we have here, we are doing an experiment on the variety trial. We have nine different varieties. If you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different varieties. And we have... place 40 feet wide by 120 feet with 8 feet deep and I have a little place here for the tractor to be and then we have this pump you notice it is about 15 feet long with a screw in it a harbor something similar to what you have underneath say the IPO um, bins you know to carry the rice the screw and the tractor PTO sharp spins it and it draws out the water here so you will find a body of water just a massive amount of water coming out here because as you know the rice requires plenty of rice I mean water especially in the initial stage right you have to have a, a create a flood to wet the field and so forth so this is the way to access the water right so what it means therefore is that even where you have those short key lands, where you have plenty of water running at the head of it, if you design something like this, then you'll be able to can successfully grow rice. Because rice requires plenty of water. Here we're gonna have the body of water going straight down here. And this machine here, this pump, for a night if it was running with the tractor, it will irrigate about 30 acres to say six inches deep of water. 30 acres for the night. Life is just for living. Life is just for living. See that cat sitting on the mat. Thinking about what is what. And who is who? That cat is me. That cat is you. See that guy. People are of the opinion that rice grows in swampland. If it is swampland, you'll have to drain it. What happens is that we have to purposely make up some bonds, some levy. When you look there, you're going to see them, right? We're just doing that land preparation there. And you're going to see we make the levy. And we're carrying that water into the place to, you know, to um, have it soak, well soak. And we would level it. We level the place. This is rice growing right here. And like I was saying that we need plenty of water and we need to have a way to entrap the water. So we purposely make up that thing that you call the levy or the bond. Life is just for living. See that cat sitting on the mat. Thinking about what is what and who is who. Before we go in it, we are rotor to kill Huh? I love it. Staring in the sky. You know, the water would carry the depth. And you use this to draw off 
all of the high areas. You draw off all of the high areas. You know how to hold your hand. And draw off all the high areas. I'm bringing the water. And get it to the to the depth. There is no countryman, I am a countryman. Countryman, I am a countryman. Countryman, I am. More water. What I'm doing here is also important for weed control, and it helps the seed to peg down. When we soak the seed, it 25 percent of the year has been replaced with water and it becomes a little bit heavy and when we have the soil like this now and when the seed comes on it it just pegs down and so you have quick emergence you know they don't have the seed they don't float away the seed they don't float away notice that the water will show where you have the high point and this will dry it down so you just dry it down into the water but you need to have plenty of water inside here to soak it up, soak the place. And so you get to use this little instrument here and really level the place. All right, we try to get the area as level as possible. You might have a 0.2% slope in it. All right, then we bring in the water here and the water is going to help to level this because if the water come there the part of the soil that is exposed it would mean that that need to be leveled down okay um we can really plant either of two ways either we are going to do transplant or we are going to sow directly in the field um whenever let's let's assume we are going to do planting directly in the field and we have some planting machines here you only see them in a the Japanese movie one of those planting machines can plant three quarters of an acre per day one man drawing it and you give your straight rows okay if we are going to transplant what will I mean if we are going to direct plant what we do is we would soak the seed for 15 to 24 hours Half the, and we put it under a dark or cloth or something like that. After soaking the seed, we drain off the water and allow it, the seeds to incubate mean, for another 24 hours. Meaning, take off the water, we get a bag about three times the size of the seed and we put it in it and cover it up. When we come back the next morning, next 24 hours, we should feel the rice a little bit warm, indicating that it has incubated. And we will see um, the, the, the radical and the plume of the, of the rice coming out. It's ready now to be planted in the field. We would wet the field, drain off the water, and then we go in with the machine in the seed and plant the seeds. Then in about three to four days time, we'll bring back water into the field. Now, the majority of this uh, period of this rice that we have is about 110 days. At 15 days of growing, we will drain off the water and put on the post-emergent herbicide. A common one is propanil. We put on propanil. We'd allow three days to elapse. Then we'd come back after three days and we put on our fertilizer, sulfate of ammonia fertilizer. Of course, you know that, like with all crop, we always do a soil test to determine the nutrient status of the, of, of the, of the soil. And we apply our fertilizer based on, on that. But in general, if you are going to grow a crop of rice for the first time, you can forego the NPK mixture and you can just come in with your sulfate of ammonia, that is the nitrogen fertilizer, at 18 to 21 days and at, for this particular variety 
and at 52 days you come back with another application of your sulfate of ammonia. Now, the rice really has two stages, the vegetative stage and the reproductive stage. You try to get on your fertilizer in the vegetative stage, not when you start to put on flour. After that period, you don't put on your no fertilizer. You, you Some farmers, especially small farmers, will choose to transplant. It's easier. They are assured of the seeds when they do the transplant. In other words, if they have a small amount of seeds and they don't want to lose it by broadcasting it or using a planting machine, they transplant. Now, to do the transplanting, what you have to do is, you have a tray like this here. It's about two inches deep. You get some paper and put at the bottom of it. You get some kaya or sawdust, mix it with the topsoil or some potty mix. You put in it and you press it down. Then, after you press it down, you get the topsoil and uh, some more of the same mixture. And you are going to put the seeds in it. This is like a paper cup for this amount here. It's like a paper cup. Let's assume that you have the topsoil in it and you press it down and you have the mix. You just get the seeds and you put them in it like that. Put them in it like that. And you water it. After you water it, you get a spray pan with some fungicide. And you spray the fungicide on it. And so it is wet. Then all of the trays, you stack them up on one another like this here. Plenty of the trays, wet and stacked up. In three days time, you come and you take them off and you will see some little white things at the top that burst out. You take up the, the thing and you put it in some water. Lay them out in water like this here. And in 21 days time, 21 days time, they will be ready to be transplanted. At this stage, they are ready to be transplanted. Okay. When you are going to transplant the seedling, if this is the field right here, you would be plant, you would be in the water and you would be planting coming back way. You would be plant, you hold them in your finger like this and just be pushing them in like this and you're stepping back. You don't plant forward in the bed. You plant and, and the, you have, the, 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 the row is supposed to be 12 inches apart and you plant them about 8 inches along the row. So you would have some sticks right there. You get some sticks, you put some sticks right there. And you have a cord. And right along the cord, you'll be putting in every every eight inches, one that, one that, and you're stepping back way, stepping back way until the plant off the field. Okay, you plant it in water. Then as soon as you plant it in water, you drain off the water. And you allow it to be half the field for about four days. Then you bring back your water. And like I said, in 21 days time, it will be ready to be transplanted. And you fertilize just then when you're ready to transplant. And you really transplant when you have what is called, I mean, you're re re really ready to fertilize a second time when you have what is called panicle initiation. You, you break down here and you see something looking like a candle week right out there right here will tell you when to put the second fertilizer but of course like I said there are two phases of the rice life the vegetative stage and the reproductive stage you make sure that you get in all your fertilizer on the vegetative stage